war rages across the mortal realms. New alliances are formed while others lie shattered, and the dominant powers ever seek their next conquest. As these two powerful forces prepare to clash, one fact is becoming clear. The season of war has begun. This battle is brought to you by our channel members and FLGS partners, Warpfire Minis and X-Planet. Hello and welcome to Season of War! And today we are excited to bring you another game of Age of Sigmar. I'm joined by my buddy Fred, uh, your second game now on the channel, buddy. Yeah. Excited to have you on for some more. Uh, we got a little bit, uh, no, no soul blight today though, bring out your other army. Playing some Flesh Eater Courts, which is kind of the bread and butter of what I usually do and what I'm known for. Yeah, big death guy. Yeah. So yeah, interesting one here today. But jumping right into things, the mission we're playing is Power Flux. So it's uh, uh, the mission where only two of the objectives are active at a time. It's, it is hold one, hold two, hold more scoring. You also get an extra point if you hold it with an Endorian Locust, mm -hmm. that objective. So extra points potentially available unless you're Fire Slayers. Um, and the player so going second in each battle round gets to choose which two objectives are active, which is very noteworthy. A big part of this mission, so very important. But then why don't we look at the armies, and Fred, you want to take us through yours first? 100%. So we're playing a more uh, fluffy, fun variety today. We're playing Gristlegore, so Monster Mash heavy. Uh, I got my Go King on Terror Guys, never leave home without it. Yep. Uh, he's the general, so he gets to fight first, which means that I can double activate with him and then activate with another threat. Uh, I got a Go King on Zombie Dragon, which is a bit more of a technical piece that's going to allow me to maybe push my horrors in ways and give them a bit more support that they need. Um, pack of six horrors that today are going to be presented as flares. I got a pack of 30 ghouls, a pack of 10 ghouls. I got my arc region, a courtier, and a second courtier to help me bring back a lot of the kind of muster capability. Yes. So it's going to be fast and loose, but hopefully with the amount of ghouls and the amount of monsters on the table, I can kind of like stick stuff until turn four or five. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I saw you had four monsters out here, so I had to one up you. Uh, with the fire slayers and bring out uh, four magma joss. So we've yeah, just to go through them first. Obviously, I got the ring father on magma joss with the general. He's got spirit of Grimnir as his trait. So my the enhanced effect on my runes will also five up. Then I have three rune sons. Two of them have uh, mount traits. The general obviously is the one who has cold heart ancient because that's the best one by far. And then not a lot else in the list. I have two rune masters. One of them knows heal. One of them knows curse. Uh, just to give me the flexibility of, of the prayers. And then I have a unit of Volkai um, Berserkers who have the, the shields just as a kind of screen and um, that's basically it. They don't have to do too much for me, but get in the way and die. And then I have two Grimwrath Berserkers. Um, one of them has the Magma Tail um, and he has the Run and Charge Oath. The other one has the Oath for the Six Up War that becomes a five up if he's in combat. And I gave him the uh, Vile Manticore Venom, uh, because I took an extra enhancement uh, for the artifact, so... That's it for me. We got a bunch of monsters here. Uh, you've got a lot more bodies than I do, but hopefully I can shoot through them. I've got a bunch of wounds, and I bleed when you deal damage yeah. to me. So... Uh, yeah, that's basically it. Though I came in, obviously a ton of drops here. Fred, you uh, out-dropped me, so you're gonna have choice. Yes. So, to a surprise, I'm gonna let you start first. Okay, sounds great. And you also get to choose which two objectives are active. Yes. So I'm gonna be choosing these two. Okay, the side ones make me move up. Uh, we'll just go into it, into Fire Slayers, turn one. Ready to cleave through rotted flesh and bone, the Fire Slayers battle tactic is Grimnir knows no mercy. The Rune Father on Magma Droth and the Ghoul King on Zombie Dragon both fail heroic leadership. Then the Fire Slayers strike the Rune of Relentless Zeal. One Rune Master fails his chant for Emberstorm, while the other chants for Prayer of Ash on the Volkites. Cautiously moving forwards, the Fire Slayers fail their battle tactic and only score three points. Not the best start for the little stunties. Turn one for the Fire Slayers was absolutely thrilling. Um, just a little disappointing, not great options for battle tactics, mm -hmm. turn one. Now, there's an obvious easy fire centers one if you deploy off the objective. In hindsight, should have done that, because um, that's an easy turn one one. But I had one that I didn't mind kind of risking or throwing away even if I didn't get it, which was the charge of the Volkites and have them remain in mm -hmm. combat. They're meant to be my screen, 
Um, but having them up, they're kind of in the way of doing that job anyway, so long as they survive, which my goal was just to tag the ghouls. So I did the movement rune in hopes of helping them get there, but failed failed Ember Storm, failed the, uh, the prayer, so it didn't get the running charge on them, so they didn't get anywhere. Um, they just, you know, so are doing the, the backup job, which is just screening out, yeah. which is fine. Just means I'm behind, potentially going to be behind two points early. But that's about it. Again, just kind of positioning, pretty cautious. Don't want to open myself up too much. You know, it's not too hard to chew, chew through the Volkites, but if you do, you're danger close. So yeah, and I'm so vulnerable to roar. Yeah, which is like the big thing in the army, like yes. not being able to double pilot. So in. having a couple monsters on my side. Is... Yeah, exactly. It's a really interesting matchup for that. It's a very careful positioning where you have to be, you know, whoever's going to strike first. Yeah, I have more m mobility, but you're such an anvil as well, and you yeah. get hit so hard. So. We'll see how it gets. Uh, and yeah, I'll dish out some damage as you hit me too, <laughs> exactly. so you know, watch those bites. But yeah, that's about it. And we'll jump into Flesh Eaters turn one. Let's go. As the Dordans stand in defiance of their noble crusade, the Flesh Eaters battle tactic is United Court. The Arch Regent fails heroic leadership while the Rune Father succeeds. The Arch Regent has poor frost and ferocious hunger unbound, but does cast Mystic Shield on himself. The ghoul King on Terrorgeist has Monstrous Vigor Unbound, while the King on Zombie Dragon casts Malefic Hunger. The Flesh Eater heroes summon three flayers, a Vargulf, and 20 ghouls. Using their greater numbers to their advantage, the Flesh Eaters complete their battle tactic and score six points. Bottom of first turn for Flesh Eater Quartz. Um, pushed everything <laughs> forward. So we started to turn into hero phase where Jordan unbinded four of my five casts. Yeah, yeah, my um, one guy with the, the art, whatever, the realm, uh, Andorian Lotus, non Andorian Lotus. Artifact or whatever, yeah, made three or four in a row, <laughs> yeah. so kept getting more. Which is even more impressive having an arc region and a plus two to cast. Yeah. They were all like nine, ten, eleven, you know, your old box guard for that one. Yeah. So, not having really the buff and the key pieces that I wanted, I decided to just move forward and occupy the center, um, trying to, you know, make the decision hard. To if Jordan chooses, if Jordan wins the, the roll off. Yeah. Notably, I got a good spell here by the uh, with the Arborant on the zombie dragon. Yeah. I got the Rigol wounds, right? Yes. For uh, everything around. Yeah. Positioning the Terry Geist in the front, whereas if he would die, then I can always use my command ability from Bristleboard to make him fight yeah. and hopefully take something with him. If not, I used all my remaining uh, command points to summon everything on the board edge, securing my next battle tactic yeah. for, the, for the future turn, and also yeah. just trying to make his position uh, difficult. Um, yeah, it definitely is annoying, and um, impacted when you did that, I'm like, okay, what I thought what I would want to do on turn two had to change, so... First step, though, is priority. Yeah. So we'll see who gets the choice. That's a five. Rocking my party at the all points dice. Haven't lost a priority yet with these dice, so... Uh, Dayton, thank you very much. Dayton, send some to me, please. Yes, so I do have choice here. Now, uh, Fred, I mentioned off camera, I actually would have liked to give you the turn here so that I could choose the two center ones mm -hmm. and try and limit the scoring or keep it close, like, in some regard. But now you can just walk those 20 ghouls on and take the objective, so there's no reason. I mean, forcing to come in is a thing, but yeah, I think. I'm going to take the turn here. We're going to Fire Slayer's turn two. Uh, Fred, do you want to choose which objectives are active? Yes. I will choose these two. Those two? Okay, so the yeah. same thing I was going to do anyways. Yeah. And yeah, we'll jump into Fire Slayer's turn two. Ready for the posturing to end and the fighting to begin, the Fire Slayer's battle tactic is led into the Maelstrom. The Rune Father uses heroic leadership while the Zombie Dragon fails, and the Fire Slayers activate the Rune of Fury. One Rune Master summons the Molten Infernoth, which deals two mortal wounds to the Terrorgeist. 
The other runemaster chants for prayer of ash on the Volkite Berserkers. The Rune Father and his Magma Droth deal 5 damage to the ghouls. One Rune Son's Magma Droth deals no damage to the Varghulf, while the others opt not to shoot. The Grim Wrath uses Forward to Victory and makes a long charge onto the enemy objective. Then the Zombie Dragon unleashes Hell, dealing 4 damage to the Dwarf. The Magma Droth stomp and roar the massive horde of ghouls. The Grimrath chugs his Magmalt Ale, then attacks and takes down the Courtier. The Ghouls deal 4 damage to each Rune Sun on Magma Draw, but suffer 2 mortals in return from their volcanic blood. The Solo Magma Droth attacks the Vargulf and deals 6 damage, leaving him alive with 2 wounds. The ghouls deal 5 damage to the Rune Father while taking one mortal in return. Another Rune Sun attacks, dealing 17 damage to the ghouls. The Varghul fights next, dealing 3 damage to the Magma Droth while suffering one mortal in return, and he just barely survives. Last to fight, the Rune Father deals 12 damage to the ghouls and those remaining flee to Battleshock, while the other unit of ghouls uses Inspiring Presence. As the fighting breaks out all across the battlefield, the Fire Slayers complete their battle tactic and score 5 points. Fire Slayers turn 2 and pretty happy with it. Um, obviously much better than my first turn. Here, I made a super long charge mm -hmm. uh, to get uh, the extra points for the objective, yep. pull two and more, so it's two points there. Hopefully, I can stop you from getting both, and then kind of draw even after I drop the tactic turn mm -hmm. one. So hopefully that kind of brings me back in it. I pivoted it away from where a lot of your power was, because of obvious reasons. I can't really like optimally get in and, and double down on units, so kind of just avoided. I killed a lot of stuff, but it was a lot of like chaff and a blade of wounds and you know, like ghouls that you don't care too much about. Though even like ghouls, they, they put four or five damage on each yeah. of my um, magma droths, which again, four of saves isn't the best, but it's still, again, a good, decent amount of wounds. When you come in, you're gonna have to worry about mortal wounds back and then Pyro will be big again. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting here. I left your your Vargulf on one wing, which I was hoping to take him down. Not the end of the world, like, but again, just wanted a nice not to take damage back and all that stuff. Um, but again, yeah, the the Grimrath popped his Magma tail, made it an 11-inch charge with a reroll to get back there. So I almost didn't reroll. I'm like, ah, oh, let's just do it. He only needs a three minimum, so he'll get he would have gotten into the deals. But there, yeah, he was a hero and. You're gonna have to send something back to fight him, and then he'll probably fight on death. So, yeah. it'll be an, I mean, it's not too much damage now, but yeah. annoying, hopefully, at least. That's it, though. Can't be too disappointed with the turn getting those points. So, now we'll just jump into Flesh Eaters, turn two. All right, let's see what we can do. Looking to counter the aggression from their foes, the Flesh Eaters' battle tactic is surround and destroy. The Arch Regent musters reinforcements, and a Rune Sun uses their finest hour. The Courtier Muster Surfs and the Flesh Eaters return a combined 14 ghouls. The King on Zombie Dragon has Malefic Hunger Unbound, while the King on Terrorgeist casts Spectral Host on himself and the ghouls. The Arch Regent has Hoarfrost Unbound, but casts Ferocious Hunger and Mystic Shield on the Ghoul King on Terrorgeist.
The King on Zombie Dragon's Pestilential Breath deals just one wound to the Grimwrath Berserker. The Flayers scream and deal two damage to the Runesan on Magmadroth. The two Terrorgeist Death Shrieks deal a combined three wounds to the Volkites. The Terrorgeist roars the Volkites while the Zombie Dragon fails its stomp. The King on Terrorgeist deals four damage to the Rune Master and takes out the Volkites. Fighting again with Feeding Frenzy, the King on Terrorgeist finishes off the Rune Master and deals 10 damage to the Rune Father, though it suffers three mortals in return. The King on Zombie Dragon finishes off the Grimwrath Berserker, but suffers three damage when the Grimwrath fights upon death. The Rune Father fights next, dealing 6 damage to the King on Terrorgeist. The Rune Master manages to deal 5 damage and precisely takes down the Ghoul King on Terrorgeist. As the fighting escalates across the battlefield, the Flesh Eaters complete their battle tactic and score 4 points. Bottom of turn 2, Flesh Eater Quartz, what a roller coaster! And that was an adventure! Yeah. <laughs> Having summoned the units beforehand, I figured Surround Destroyer was the best battle tactic to yeah. do. So. Knowing that I was automatically achieved, I figured that if I'm lucky with my casting, which I was, I was able to catapult the Terror Geist in the backfield and hopefully deal as much damage as possible. Yeah. Didn't end up being the case. Well, you dealt a good <laughs> amount of damage. You, I mean, what? Close to 20 damage to lift the Volkrites. Yeah. Killed one of the six wound heroes off the top, but... First activation was good, but then yeah. second activation... So I had the um, uh, Black Conger, so three extra attacks so on six maws, I hit with one, but yeah. then only doing six mortal, yeah. re-rolling every mist and getting nothing else in yeah. return. Uh, left the Berserker on well, the, the, the Rune Father with like three wounds left, yeah. but then when obviously we saw yeah. it, when you, he went down, you did two mortals on death, so he's now alive with one. Yeah, exactly, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. Um, the other hero was kind of also a, a, a blunder where the the Berserker was left on two wounds. Yeah. Um, so I, I had two opportunities on a two plus to kill him, yeah. and I wasn't able to. They rolled two ones, yeah. both for Stomp and for the uh, D6 Moral, the D6 yeah. attack for the Breath. The shooting, yeah. Yeah, which would have mean that I could have moved the Zombie Dragon maybe just a bit further. Yeah. Um, overall, it's not the end of the world. I retreated with a bunch of shit, um, so I have a bit more of like a, a board control, yeah. but uh, not being able to kill the, the general was like a big a big deal. So For sure. we'll see how it goes, but so far so good, I feel. Yeah, What's no. your take? Um, again, like when you jumped my lines there with the, the zombie dragon or the ghoul king, I was definitely worried that like you would be able to get into him with a double pylon. I thought about piling in a way, but I also didn't want to give you the objective yeah. and make it too easy. Um, so the way that worked out, I mean, I'm pretty like like got a little luck for that to work out that way. Where not only did I live, which okay, that not out of the realm of possibility. 18 wounds is a lot to go yeah. through, um, but to actually kill the the zombie dragon or sorry, the terror dice on your turn was yeah. a big shock. So. It's a 14 wounds, eh? Yeah. Is that yeah. those extra it's four like, wounds? You see it directly here. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. the same profile, but just a couple of wounds more. Yeah. So, yeah, very interesting. Though, I, again, I am limping here, so it's like I'm like, you, I would think you could, you would almost think I'm in a position to like give away the turn, but, but just because he's limping, if I mm -hmm. want him to do something else in the game, I can't do it away. Yeah. It's been a big prior as well in terms yeah. of like which objective we're at. Yep, uh, yep, that's very true. Choosing. So, yeah, we can go into can it. I roll more than a two we'll on see. Seasons of War. That's a one for me. It's a two. Oh no, it says me. It's uh, a three. I get it. Okay. Okay. Um, so, your, your, your choice. I think I will take it. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Right. And I'll choose the outer objectives um, because, again, there's a good chance you take my home one here. So, mm -hmm. uh, these will be the active objectives, and we'll go into Flesh Eater Courts turn three. As the battle fiercely rages, the Flesh Eater's battle tactic is led into the Maelstrom. The Courtier musters reinforcements, and in combination with his ability, he replenishes all the ghouls. Then the Rune Father fails heroic recovery. The Arch Regent has ferocious hunger unbound, but casts Mystic Shield on the horrors. 
Lastly, the Ghoul King on Zombie Dragon casts Malefic Hunger. The Rune Father redeploys, moving 5 inches. The Flayers shoot and deal 2 damage to the Magmadroth. The Terrorgeist's Death Shriek finishes off the Rune Father. What a sad way to die! The Magmadroth unleashes Hell and finishes off the Charging Varkulf. The Terrorgeist and one Magmadroth both stomp, while the other Magmadroth fails its roar. The ghouls start the fighting by dealing 13 damage to one Magmadroth and 11 to the other, but they suffer 12 mortal wounds in return. The ghouls use Feeding Frenzy to fight again, finishing off one Magmadroth but only dealing one damage to the other. Retaliating, the wounded Magmadroth takes out the remaining ghouls. The flayers deal 5 damage to the Magmadroth, who deals 7 damage in return. The Rune Master deals no damage, then the Terror Geist takes him out. The Grimrath attacks and takes out a Horror. Then the Horrors fight back, taking down the Magmadroth and dealing 2 damage to the Grimrath. Fighting again at the end of combat, the Grimrath takes down another Horror. Then he looks around and realizes he's all alone. Claiming honor in this great victory, the Flesh Eaters complete their battle tactic and score 5 points. Top of three for um, Flesh Eater Quartz. Um, Doesn't look good. No, that was a pretty good turn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a couple things like went like sideways, but overall, the goal was just to cram as much possible the yeah. army of, of Jordan. Um, I wasn't able to buff anything again. Like um, unbinds were just like you know, on point. Really, really, really good. Uh, there was this one spell I got to reroll all the wounds for my horrors, which I we which completely forgot to, to use in the end. Mm. Uh, but uh, we moved everything forward, try to control both uh, objectives. Um, just to be on the safe side, because the battle tactic was to maintain in, in combat, yeah. and the terror guys had to be in combat, uh, I spearheaded my um, zombie, dra my zombie dragon, For just to make sure that we get the area of effect right. Issue CP. Yeah, and exactly. All that too. Yeah. Uh, knowing that most of the stuff I have is pretty weak, uh, I, I voted for numbers. Yeah. And one of them had to be alive. Yep, yep, it makes sense. And obviously, a big story is bringing back the ghouls from two models yes. back to full over yeah. two turns. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, double muster was really, really, really strong. Yeah. Got 13 or 14 um, both turns. So I was able to go back to 30, and then that was yeah. like the, the deal breaker for the two Magma draw. Yeah, the sheer yeah. amount of attack. They don't hit very hard, but when there's like 30 Volume dice. And the just Magma draw, that four up save is just yeah. so bad. Yeah, I failed the roar. I had to yes, the roar yes, off. Yeah. They both potentially are living. It would have would would actually been worthwhile to all our defense one. And then I potentially have more damage coming back and taking yeah. out the you know the horrors. And you, and you could have also used this uh, this tech piece yeah. to kind of dish additional damage where you where you, where you needed to go. Yeah. Um, so so a bit of luck, uh, a bit of strategy, oh. but overall uh, pretty happy with how the turn yes. came in. Some good board control. Yeah, I have two models remaining, yeah. uh, so it doesn't look good. I was going to say I, had th I was hoping I would have the automatic battle tactic of intimidating invaders. Um, but going into my turn, I don't even have that. Under the circumstance, the best battle tactic option I think I have is, is uh, an honorable death, one of the Fire Slayers ones. To choose one of my heroes, kill a model, which you have one horror with two wounds left, yeah, and then die true. in combat. So I would just try to pile him in to get the mo make you get as many attacks into him as possible. Yeah. It's either that or I could walk him on the objective for, but that's only one point, so the battle tactic yeah. is two. So I think that's the best bet. Get two points here and then. I wouldn't score anything else turn four uh, or five, and you would be getting a whole two or more. Yeah. Potentially would, a bonus point or two as well. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to get much battle tactics. Yeah. Maybe just intimidate. Okay. Just, um, yeah. And then everything else would be just like one, two more. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and the bonus point because you have the Android yeah, Locus. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, after the Terror Dice went down, everyone else kind of stepped yeah. up uh, in the battle. <laughs> yeah, they did. But yeah, good bloody one here with, with the Flesh Eaters. I think the Magma Droths always underwhelm me a little bit. But we saw their damage pop off a couple times yeah. against the ghouls, because they're so bad and they, they have no saves. Yeah. But it's just not quite enough damage it, like, to be the core centerpieces yeah. of an army. Well, the fact that they have a low amount of attacks as well, is even though they're hitting and wounding on twos, yeah. you miss one or two and it's just like, 
halves your, yes. your, your, your damage output. Even if it's like, okay, it's, you know, they have maybe like 11 at full profile, they have 11 attacks and mm -hmm. but they're only like, they're threes and threes, one rend, two damage. So you get four through at most, eight damage. It's not incredible, right? Something with better saves is going to be even less. Um, so yeah, not great. And then the other attacks are D3 damage, and they only have three there. And that is their more consistent yeah. profile. Yeah. So it's like, hey, okay, sometimes I got lucky and got two through, but then it's like, you rolled two ones on the D3. Yeah. So just not the most reliable and not the highest kind of mm -hmm. yeah, bracket of damage. And I feel like the uh, the blood, like the acid blood, the shot is really good if you don't yeah, have any wounds, you know? Yeah. But when you're fighting 30, 30 ghouls, you did 20 mortal wounds that one turn, yeah. but it's still only 120 points or 130 points a model, right? Yes. I feel like if you're fighting with something that's very elite, then it becomes like super important. Yeah. Like, you did kill the terror guys earlier. Yes. It's 500 so, points like this, you know? But, there's a, definitely other factors to consider with, with them. Um, but yeah, like decent movement in a Fire Slayer's army that's otherwise slow. Yeah. Uh, they do have the, the kind of chip shooting, which was notable at times. They're pretty bounce from Unleash Hal, kill the Vargo. Yeah. yeah, so. Yeah. Um, the big, yeah, sad thing, obviously, the Moonfather going down there to the shooting, actually, this turn. Yeah. Um, meant you didn't really have to worry about activations too much, though you could have avoided it. Island, so. Yeah, I guess what do you think? I know this was a, a more flavorful flesh ears list for you. Uh, I mean, I think the army is still lags behind. Like the fact that we have to use all our artifacts and mount traits to give my caster extra cast means that I can't be in in, in, in a one drop. And we saw earlier, like being 14 wounds on the four up. It's very situational. Bristlebore is fun because you get that kind of one-two punch, so you get to always like attack first with your um, with your with your general. But when you lose your general like earlier, you're very at the mercy of the of dice, right? Yeah. So no, winning the double was the only way I could be in in, in the game, because uh, then you only have that one activation, and yeah. you're losing all these key pieces quite fast. Yeah. This list is all right. I feel there's enough more presence and a couple threats. Yeah. You're always a roar away from things going sideways. Hundred percent, and that's the vulnerability of the army. Yeah. So when they can't take a hit back, you have to be yeah. the first one hitting, yes. and you have to be the yeah. first one to double pilot. Yeah. So if you're lucky enough, you can pile into the monsters, but it's very situational again. For sure. Yeah. But yeah, good opportunity here, and you do have the bodies, which helps obviously for, for not only screen but objective control. If you bring those three, 30 guys back, you just rocked onto that objective and took it. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, a, a good showing for the flesh ears here and some of the big beasties out, which is <laughs> yeah. always fun to see. And a beautifully painted army, obviously I love the colors, so yeah. Yeah, it looks great. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, again, Fire Slayers, not quite doing it. You, like they used to have it be insane damage, I feel like, back in their heyday, but it mm -hmm. just isn't, isn't quite the same. Uh, but yeah, not the most optimal build yeah. by any means no, on no, the other no. side. So. 100%. A lot of fun though, either way. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching that game as well. Don't forget, if you want to help support the channel and get access to extra content, you can check out our YouTube membership. And it just goes a long way in terms of helping to support the channel. So we super appreciate it. But either way, we'll see you guys soon in another Battle Report.